Okay, folks, I'm back, and this will be the final tutorial for a little while in this series that has been all about setting up uh, three different IDEs to work with older code. And the code we're working with is Freak Out from Tricks of the Window Game Programming Gurus by Andre Lamoth. It was dated 2002, um, and I'm not going to go into all the things about it that I've already talked about before in the other videos. Uh, but this video is covering how to get this code to work in code blocks. So, as you can see, we have code blocks open, and I've already done the files and stuff. It's going to be the same process as the Visual Studio. So I will go over here really quick and I will try to make this as fast as I can because I really need to go to bed. I've just spent a good amount of time figuring this out and I am ready for my sleep and I have earned it. So I have the source code here. You have to ask Mr. Lamoth for the source code. It is copyrighted and he can he he, he is not allowing me to share a link to it or anything. Um, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to get it from the site. So, since he's the boss on that, you have to talk to him. And I've already showed you in another video where his site is. Um, and what we do with each of these is we simply open these in Notepad. And we go to Edit, Select All, Edit, Copy. And now in here, it's the same as Visual Studio. We have created some files. We go to Add Files. Or, no, never mind. We go to File, New. And we go to File. And we're going to add three files from this dialog. We're going to add one header file. I'm not going to actually go through the whole process because I've already added it. It's going to give you this little thing here. Now you've got to type in a name and then after you type in the name just click this button and I already have a directory here for this project it's in uh, a folder called freak out because I started a new project when I did this so and that's also done in file new project but I just went to a new project and I had a folder called freak out and that's where all this stuff is and you just call this black box and it'll fill in the .h itself. I'm not doing it this time. And then it'll put it in there to put in a guard word. You want to check these two boxes or click this all button. So, those, so all three of these are checked here. That's what the end result we want. And then finish. And you do that for your header file down here. And you do that also to add two C++ source files. One will be named Black Box and the other one will be named Freak Out. And when you're done, you'll have a Black Box and Freak Out CPP. And then you just copy the code from Lamoth's original source into the corresponding document here. And so you just click on there and press Control V and it pastes to make sure it says Black Box CPP up there. And you do the same for freakout CPP, same for blackbox.h. I would advise after you do each after you do each step, like after you've got all the new files in place, that you save it. And that as you paste each one in place, you save it after each paste. Uh, it crashed on me and I lost a lot of work. So that'll ensure that if it crashes you don't lose anything more than just the last step. So do all the new file add the new files first, then save it and then do the pasting into each of these and then save it. And now we're going to do some environmental variables. So if we go over here to settings and compiler oh I forgot something. Well the settings will still matter here but uh, I'm going to have to have to go to another step. I forgot one thing. I just remembered it now. Why are you not loading the compiler options? 
Shouldn't be grinding over that. I don't have anything else going on. It's giving me a fit. Okay, well while it figures out when it wants to give me my compiler box, I'm going to go here to desktop for me, and I'm going to go to my tutorial. Okay, you need something here, and I'm going to show you. So you download code blocks, you download the one with the GNU compiler and all that stuff, as I showed you, I believe, in an earlier video. But now you need to get this install gitinst file. So I've got a link to it here. I'll put it in the bottom of this description of this video. Now, I don't really know how to operate this very well, but this file here, if it'll load and, sh and I can show you, will put in some Win32 API and some other stuff that you need, and I guess you don't get uh, with the regular GNU that's installed with code blocks. I don't know why, but you don't seem, I don't think you get it. So you can see right here we've got this exe file and it's the mini gw git inst that's off of the home installer mini gw git inst for the mini min gw minimalist gnu for windows uh, and this is the compiler that you're using yeah, I think it's compiler that you're using in code blocks so you need this and then you need to install this and you need to be online when you do it because it's going to download a whole bunch of files. You want to check every box when you install it. You'll get a list of boxes. There'll be uh, some that are set in a little bit and then two at the end. You want every single box checked and then you're going to install this. And then when you install it, actually I think I can show you maybe. Let's see what, what steps I can show you here. So I have under programming and under code blocks. We'll see what it lets me do. So you want to use the prepackaged repository, whatever. And I accept, of course. And your area. Oh man, I hope it's not going to... Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. It goes to Select Components. Click this and get all of this stuff and then get these two down here and then click next and then a DOS box will pop up after a bit. It's going to download a bunch of stuff. Now, notice where I have it installed. I stuck it in code blocks directory. In code blocks directory when you install the one with this compiler there's an M mingw folder. I just use that so I just clicked on code blocks and installed it there and now I've got code blocks mingw and now I have all of these checked and then you would install and it will download the updates and then you'll have everything that you need um, so if you've already started this and you've got some of these things going here we can continue uh, no we'll continue with the settings uh, I'll have you I'll leave this open now but I'll have you stop uh, close everything out stop code blocks and then install that and then come back once it's installed and you can pause this video right here and I apologize for this disorganized usually I remember the steps but this, I'm really tired so okay so now I'm assuming you've done that you have you have it all in there and the reason for that is now we gotta set some things so we got the gene UC, GCC compiler here under linker settings there's a whole bunch of stuff here what you want to do is you go to add and what it wants is library files remember dot lib from directx but it wants individual files oh fudge I don't want you to do that let's try to press the up arrow alright don't do what I just did there uh, anyway so we need to go to our DirectX area and lib and then x86 and then just click on whichever end and then shift and then highlight them all and then click open and then it'll ask you a question press yes and then add those and then the other ones are yep, this box will close out and you'll have to go back to add again and open it up and the other ones are here and do the same thing 
and this is in code blocks minzyw lib and you want all of these files not the folders just the files in here and then open and then say yes and then okay and then you'll have this huge list of all these files and now in search directories we need to click on uh, add and then you browse to your for the compiler and the resource compiler you want the include and you want DirectX on the top excuse me I got an itch I got an itch going on in my ear so you'll want the DirectX on top with the include for DirectX and then the include for mini DW in code blocks and I'm not going to go through that because you can see pretty clearly where they are and you want that for both of these and then you want that also here but here I mean, sorry, you don't want that here. What you want here is the lib x86 for DirectX and then Coblox MinGW lib. Okay, so include, include, lib, lib, include, include, DirectX on top of all of them. Then you'll press OK and it'll do its little settings, which are not done yet. Now you also, and I should, I would advise saving at this point as well. You don't want it to ever crash on you and then lose stuff. So go to build options for your individual project. Now you may not have to do this if you set those global variables and then you do a new project. I don't know if it makes it apply to all new projects or if it, if you have to do this for each project, how that exactly works. It has something to do with something like the property manager and, uh, in uh, Visual Studio I think. Oh one more thing while I'm here if you're using English and you're American you want to change this flag and I don't know if I'm to right click or left click but there's a click and uh, a box will pop up and you can select your flag in this case for me it's it's English American and that'll change some other issues that you might experience. Let me see if I can get it to work. Not yet okay wait until we're done here so in here under debug you're going to do the same thing you're going to add all the same files and you're going to put the same search directories as the directx on top it's the exact same thing and then press ok when you're done okay now yeah right here english that's right click english united states and that will solve some other problems that you might experience using this Okay, so once you've done that, everything's all linked together and you saved it, you'll want to go to build and rebuild if you had to move around or change any of your files and it was depending on them, that's the safest option, just do a normal build otherwise. And then after you've built it, you can then run it. And we'll go ahead and see that really quick and you can see that it's working and pressing the key to continue to get out of there. Uh, one other addition that, that one other thing you'll have to change is of course the iostream.h will have to be the .h will have to be deleted. I believe I stick it in there it'll have an error and it won't work. Let me see. So I've added iostream.h. I'm now going to build build and we, yeah we get the fatal error so you got to make sure to delete these I, these dot H's on the I/O streams. And this one will build with some warnings. The Visual Studio will come out uh, perfectly clean, but this one has a few warnings. Normally, you want to correct your warnings. I don't know how to do that in this case yet and of course the same homework applies here and I don't have my book with me the same homework applies here as the previous two hold on one minute I want to go get my book
So, in Tricks of the Windows Game Programming Guru, 2nd edition, published by Sam, authored by Andre Lamoth, in Appendix B, under Using C++ Compiler, your assignment for code blocks is to figure out how to change the error level setting and make it a low level like 1 or 2, but don't turn it off. That's one of the things he advises to deal with typecast errors by putting an R value, just put it in front of an R value expression to fix it and then uh, cast them. Uh, optimization settings, uh, make sure that those aren't set too high, standard. Uh, threading should be single threaded unless he says otherwise within the book. Uh, it needs to be set for Pentium for code generation. Unless of course you're using something other than a Pentium, uh, which is a normal PC, you know, like Windows. Uh, and then the struct alignment setting that up high. So you need to look those things up and see how you would do that here in CodeBlocks. CodeBlocks has a nice PDF manual that's 64 pages long and you can download that and study it. So I have now done what I set out to do. You can now run this code which is between 11 and 14 years old within CodeBlocks and you can run it in Visual Studio Express 2008 for C++ and Visual Studio Express 2010 for C++. That proves that this code was written correctly. You've only had to make that one change of add, deleting the .h. And, you know, if I knew a little more about how to configure this, you probably would even have to do that. And it runs in all three IDEs. So this concludes this video and the set of videos for now. I'll be back with further uh, with additional projects as I run across errors and problems later because these are all different environments. Understand that here you are generally working in code blocks you're working in normal C language standard C and in Visual Studio working in Visual C. So they're different languages. So it's going to have some some uh, different variations and things that are going to have to be understood and we're going to have to learn that together. I'll see you later.